first of all, I have to tell to Mr. Henkel uh, that uh, personally uh, I have always said that uh, the exit of uh, Britain uh, from the European Union is a failure of the European Union. When a big country like the UK leaves the European Union, you can difficulty, it's very difficult to say, oh, what a fantastic thing. It's the opposite. I think that the place of uh, the UK is inside the European Union. And I'm also pretty sure that there will be a generation in the coming years, in the coming decades, who will return to the European Union. I'm sure of it, that this young generation already exists in the UK and that they will take another decision than the decision that has been taken by this government and this majority. But, Mr. Henkel, may I ask you to tell this to your own friends in your own group in the ECR, who are the main people for a Brexit for the moment. It's a little bit easy to give lessons to us here, and especially to me, and saying, yeah, you don't like Britain, the opposite is true, but not to be capable to convince your own people in your own group and who are not there for the moment to uphold you, I see. Nobody is there. Secondly, the reality, Mr. Henkel, is the following. Those who started this whole Brexit, who is in fact an attempt of the Conservative Party, you're working with the Conservative Party, you know them very well. It was in fact an attempt to take back control. And that was the big slogan of the Brexiteers and it's still the big slogan of the Brexiteers. It seems to me that Britain seems to be spinning out of control instead of being back in control. And I think that the only reasonable way, Mr. Henkel, to solve this problem, and you didn't talk about that, unfortunately, is that there is cross-party cooperation in British politics the fastest as possible a compromise, a common view between Labour and the Conservatives. How you do you want to solve an existential problem like Brexit if it is used by both parties to kill each other? For them, Brexit is a bullet in a weapon yeah, yeah. and not an existential problem of a country and of a whole continent. And that's a shame. So our, our and yours, your appeal have to be in this plenary not to attack one or other colleague, but to say to the British political class, start to make an agreement between the two big parties and start, in fact, to have an opinion that we can support here in this parliament. And that opinion will be a close relationship between the UK and the EU. And that is the way forward. And I think that what is needed is that uh, in British politics, queen and country are put first instead of the party politics that are governing the UK politics and the House of Commons for the moment. And that brings me to the, to the, to the, the next question, extension. I don't want a long extension, I'd say you that very openly. An extension, why we go beyond the European elections and the European elections will be hijacked by the Brexiteers and by the whole Brexit issue. We will talk only about that and not about the real problems and the real reforms that we need in the European Union. And the only thing what we will do, we will give a new mandate to Mr. Farage. That's the only thing what we're going to do. That's, that's, that's exactly what he wants. Why he wants that? For two reasons. First of all, he can continue to have a salary that he can transfer to his offshore company. And the second... And the second thing, and the second thing, and the second thing, and, and the second thing is that he can continue to do his work, dirty work in the European Union, that is to try to destroy the European Union from within. That is the real purpose. Well, my, and that is what you are, and he confirms. So, what I think is that that's absolutely what we don't need. What we need is now certainty from the House of Commons, from a majority in the House of Commons, as Mr. Henkel has also asked for. That is what we need. And so I'm against every extension. When an extension of one day, one week, even 24 hours, if it is not based on a clear opinion of the House of Commons for something, that we know what they want. Is it less ambitious than the deal? Okay, it is less ambitious than the deal. 
That's your opinion. If it is a customs unit, it is a customs unit. If it is the deal, it is the deal. If it is a Norway plus, it's a Norway plus. But please make up your mind in London, because this uncertainty cannot continue. Not for us, not for Britain, and certainly not for our citizens. Thank you, President. I'm very much hoping, after nearly 20 years, that this is my penultimate speech in this Parliament, and that I won't be coming back here again in July. And I'm sure many of you here would share that sentiment. Mr Barnier, I told you that treaty wouldn't go through the House of Commons. You didn't believe me. It's been rejected. I think you pushed your luck too far. You asked for too much, and this morning you find yourself short of £39 billion. So I'm sure you're feeling a bit sore about that. But don't worry, help is at hand, because the House of Commons today will do, I'm sure, their utmost to betray the Brexit vote. They're even going to vote against what Article 50 said, which is, of course, that we leave on the 29th of March with or without a deal. And I have to say, I think the gap now between our political class in the UK and public opinion is a gaping chasm because, be in no doubt, public opinion is hardening. There is a greater sense of unity in the country that I've seen for some years. We simply want to leave, and that applies to many who voted Remain as well because they respect the very principle of democracy. And we've had enough. We've seen the snarling anger towards our country of Mr Verhofstadt, the bureaucratic intransigence of Mr Barnier, the constant stream of insults that come from Mr Tusk, and we're of one mind. We don't want to be governed by you. We want to govern ourselves. Yeah. Now, I'm sure the next instalment of this will be the British Prime Minister next Thursday, going to the European summit in Brussels, it, it, an, an, another humiliating display where she begs for an extension to Article 50. Well, I've got a solution to all of this. What I heard you, Mr Barnier, this morning say that if this treaty, if this withdrawal agreement gets passed, the next phase of negotiations could last for up to four years. I thought, enough. We don't want to waste four more years of our life, four more years of agony. And you don't want to waste another four years. You've got your plan. You want a United States of Europe. You want your army. You want everyone to join the Euro. You want to get rid of the nation states. We are just a damned nuisance. And add to that, as Mr Verhofstadt said, the European elections. You don't want me coming back here or hordes of Eurosceptics coming back here. So there is a simple solution, and that is that the British request to extend is vetoed at that European summit. We leave on March the 29th. Most of the preparations have been done. Even if there are a few short-term bumps in the road, we leave and both you and we can get on with the rest of our lives. That is the only neat solution ahead of us. Yeah, yeah.